There we go. I can get the video to work. Oh, well. Welcome, everybody. I'm Jonathan with Audio Advice. Here we go. We'll play it real This August 19th through the 21st, Audio Advice presents the premier audio and video experience. Whether you're into high-performance audio, home theater, two-channel, turntables, or headphones, Audio Advice Live is the only premier high-end audio and video show where you can experience it all. Meet face-to-face with the industry's top experts, brands, and influencers, and hear all the latest and greatest gear live and in person. Audio Advice Live. We'll see you there. Very cool. All right. So if you don't know by now, uh, we are having a big show in downtown Raleigh, August 19th through the 21st. We are super excited and we're throwing a big party and we hope all of our friends can join us. So you will see lots of our friends, uh, Darren and Ricky Rotel will, will, Rotel will be at Audio Vice Live and we'll tell you more about what those guys are going to be showing as well as many, many of our other brand partners. So welcome back to another one of our monthly live streams. We are great and honored to have our friends from Rotel joining us that I'll be introducing you uh, to here in just a moment. We're also welcoming back Nick Rich from our audio advice uh, home theater and sales team. And let us know where it is that you're dialing in from. It's great to see folks from all over the country and all over the world uh, dialing in. And again, if you're drinking something, happy hour, cheers. Uh, let us know what it is that you're, you're drinking this evening as well. Uh, here's what we're going to do and what you can expect for the next hour. So we're going to introduce our friends from Rotel. We're going to talk about this amazing giveaway that they have provided for us, which is really, really exciting. A brand new product launch that we're going to hear more about. And also keep those questions coming in. We have a great prize, a separate prize for best question, which we're going to tell about here in just a minute. It's the uh, Rotel tribute, which is really, really awesome. So we'll let you know a little bit more about that. So if you have questions, start putting them in the comments. Uh, if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, we can see all of those comments coming in. We're going to try to get to as many as we possibly can, and then we'll wrap it up at the end, uh, letting you guys know who won. So again, thanks for joining us. Welcome back. Uh, we'll kick it off with intros. Darren, we'll, we'll start with you, and we always like to have a fun question. So uh, let everybody know where it is that you are joining us from, what it is that you do, and our question, intro question, fun question is going to be, what is the worst concert experience? Not worst concert but worst concert experience maybe that you can share with the rest of the group. And if you've got one that you want to share in the comments, feel free to let us know as well. So Darren, to you, my friend. Hey, thanks, Jonathan. It's a pleasure to be here. And thanks for uh, allowing a, a Rotel event. It's great to be part of the happy hour. And we're, and we're thrilled with our uh, audio advice support and our, and our friends in the business. So as a CTO for Rotel, I'm based in, um, in Florida. I'm working a lot with the Rotel themes globally and um, really, uh, really great. A uh, worst concert experience, not the worst concert experience. So it's a it's a it's a tragic story. Um, young man, uh, got some tickets, thinking I'm gonna have a perfect date night. I got Chicago tickets in my hand, right? The perfect ultimate date concert. Uh, the last minute cancellation, and what are you gonna do, right? Go or not go? It was a tough call, but going stag to a Chicago concert is not something I would recommend when you're <laughs> 17. Yeah, not a bad concert, not a good concert experience as a stag, but I did it. I powered through it and I survived. Very cool. Well, if we're all being honest, it's probably happened to all of us at one point uh, <laughs> in our in our lives. So very, very cool. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Ricky. How are you guys doing? Uh, my name is Ricky. I'm the marketing manager for Rotel and I am based in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I would say probably my worst concert experience that I can remember, because I think luckily we tend to forget the bad ones. Um, would be going to see the band Brand New when I lived in Austin, one of my favorite bands of all time. I waited over a decade to finally get a chance to see them. Saw them at, um, can you remember the name of the venue now? I haven't been in Austin for a while, but it was just one of the worst experiences I've ever had at a show. A band that I was anticipating so much, and yeah. the sound was awful. They did new arrangements on songs that didn't make sense. Not great. But I'm here at Rotel. Everything here is awesome. We love working with you guys at Audio Advice, and Happy to talk to everybody and, and get some cool questions and answer stuff for you. Great. Well, thanks for joining us. And again, let us know if you uh, if you got a little happy hour beverage, let us know what it is that you're drinking. I know you had something fun to share. Uh, I have one of these. Uh, it's 18th Ward Hummingbirds or Legal Tinder Blonde Ale with a really pretty can here. Very, very cool. Very cool. And I think some folks are already asking about those scents you got in the background. So you'll have to tell us a little bit more about those in just a few minutes. Nick, welcome back. Hey, hey. Yeah. For, the, uh, for those of you who don't know, I am Nick and I'm a theater designer here at Audio Advice. And so I'm based out of beautiful, sunny Asheville. So it's always uh, it's always nice weather here. But, um, you know, as for worst concert experience, you know, one of my actual favorite bands, it was one of the worst concert experiences. It was a band called King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. 
really funky band. But uh, I was up towards the front. I got there super early and I was like, I'm going to be right at the front. And it was uh, they changed genres all the time. It happened to be their thrash metal genre uh, at the time. And so I ended up being right in the center of where the mosh pit was for me. I'm not a mosher myself by any means. And so it kind of started breaking out and I'm stubborn. So I tried to power through it and stand right there. You can't do that. Uh, and so I kind of got pushed out of the way. And then to add insult to injury, I guess people like to dash beer or liquid all over the, uh, the mosh pit. And so I got covered in beer, pushed around for about two hours straight. So it was, um, it was interesting, good show, but bad experience for me. And I know you usually got the the fancy micro brews from Asheville. What do you what do you have today? Well, I actually um, forgot to pick up beer, so I have a Waterloo zero uh, percent ABV and uh, barely bitter at all. So it's delicious. Feel free to uh, poke some fun at, at, at Nick. I've got the the Dos Aquis, right? It's, it's summertime. I usually have the Bells Oberon. I think somebody mentions in the in the comments, but the store I go to didn't have it uh, last time I was there. So I'll it's a good beer. It's a great one, especially, obviously, a great summer beer, for sure. Uh, very cool. And I'm Jonathan. It's great to see everyone again. My worst concert experience, I was trying to think real quickly, but I think it's the Counting Crows. It wasn't that the Counting Crows didn't put on a good show. Is that Similarly, I had my girlfriend with me. We're super excited about seeing them. This was many, many years ago. And uh, we were at this big amphitheater in Raleigh, and they had, like, an hour of audio difficulty. Like, they just couldn't get it to work. So all just sitting there, like, hanging out, waiting, waiting, waiting. It rained. And then finally, I think there's a there's like a noise ordinance. So they had a curfew. And so by the time they finally got everything working, it was like 30 minutes of the show. So it was a show I was certainly excited to see and, and was looking forward to for a long time. But nonetheless, uh, still was glad that I was able to see him. All right. So here we have a really cool product that we're going to tell you guys about that. I want um, Darren, I'll turn it over to you to tell everybody a little bit about the awesome giveaway that we have this month. Yeah, we're excited, Jonathan. This is a brand new product. So the uh, Rotel RA6000, a fully integrated Class A B 200 watt per channel amplifier. And this is a Diamond series. So this was just launched uh, a couple of weeks ago, really celebrating the history and the heritage of Rotel on our 60th anniversary. Fantastic product. And we're excited to give one of these away to, uh, to the event. Awesome. And we're going to unpack this and its companion products in a lot of detail here in just a moment. And then real quickly, um, also tell everybody a little bit about our best question giveaway as well. The tribute. We've got uh, a Rotel A11 tribute, again, integrated amplifier. This was a product that I'm very proud to talk that we worked with Ken Ishiwata, who was truly an audio legend. Using a lot of his experience in engineering, he helped us create the Tribute series of products just before he tragically passed away. And we launched those products really in celebration to Ken and really to show appreciation for what he had done in his 40 plus years in the audio industry. So again, a great Class AB Rotel integrated amplifier. And the retail value on that is what, just under 800? Yeah, just under 800. So that's an awesome, awesome uh, giveaway for best questions. So thanks again for providing that. So keep those questions coming in. We're going to get to as many as we possibly can. Uh, a lot of people are already asking about the new Diamond Series. You know, what does that mean? Can you give us the history? So for those who maybe know a little bit about Rotel or they don't know about Rotel, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the, the brand story and, you know, the, the history behind Rotel and then what sort of led up to uh, the design of this amazing new anniversary product. Yeah, you know, Rotel is, is an amazing brand with an incredible history. I talk about 60 years, and it really is. The brand was started in 1961 in Tokyo, Japan. The founder, Mr. Tomoki Tachikawa, he started an OEM factory. He realized he could build fantastic products, great quality, and exceptional value. He started his business uh, just as a factory and then launched Rotel really to a global market. We look at how that brand and the products and the technologies have evolved. It's fantastic. But the brand has always been family owned and it's always been family managed. And technology has evolved and the, the products have evolved, but it's still today third generation family owned. So it's really something that we're incredibly proud of. And when we looked at our 60th anniversary, we wanted to do something special. We want to do something to help us celebrate that as, as our anniversary and really do something that was respectful. But it wasn't just about the products or celebrating the history and the, the brand. It was about celebrating and respecting the family themselves. So it was a bit of a challenge to make sure that we did something that looked and performed and had that quality standard that was synonymous with Royal Town. And we were proud to launch, launch the two new Diamond Series products last month. Very, very cool. Uh, my apologies. I think Steve asked, said I said 7900 Hundred instead of seven ninety nine. So thank you for correcting me there. And we are live. Someone said, "Is this a recording?" No, this is live. 
Uh, we see all the comments coming in, all the chats coming in. We will post this on our YouTube channel after we're all done, so you can go back and we'll answer as many questions as you can. Um, but Darren, thank you for telling us the, the history. Maybe tell us a little bit more about you know who is this product designed for, and maybe what are some of the the performance benefits and features that really make it stand out. It was uh, it was great when we looked at the technology. What were we going to put in this product? What were we going to engineer for the two products to help us celebrate this? So the RA6000, we engineered that purely for performance, and it had to be a best of Rotel. So we looked at what we had created and designed for the Michi series. We looked at some of the recent Mark II Rotel products, and we basically took the engine, the power supplies, and the amplifiers from the Michi series, and we coupled that with the Mark II technologies and the digital front end, put those together into a fantastic integrated amplifier. So the RA6000 really is a best of and top of the line, top in class Rotel product. We wanted something to, to match with that. We needed a source. So we looked at the technologies again, what could we do? We love CD players, we love vinyl discs. We've been building CD transports for almost 40 years and we've had uh, 60 different models over that time. Yeah. So Rotel loves shiny plastic discs and we really like the way that they have evolved and really built on the technology. So we built a transport that included a CD player and then we built on top of that an integrated high performance DAC. So the DT6000 is the companion to the RA6000 as a DAC with this integrated CD transport. And designing that, the engineers auditioned four different manufacturers of DAC with different levels of performance and different acoustic signatures. And we awarded this product an ESS Saver 8 channel DAC to really bring out and drive a level of detail and a level of, of space and sophistication and really just performance and precision. So this CD player is not only the newest, but it's the best CD player that we've ever made. And with the digital inputs, PC, USB, high resolution uh, media rendering, we're, we're thrilled about this. And it just presented with that eight channel deck, a great sense of space and depth and layering and precision to the audio. The two products are beautiful. We used the industrial design and looking at the heritage of Rotel, but keeping with that modern styling. So they're slightly different than the typical uh, Rotel series we have today, but they're very representative of that history and that culture of the business. Yeah, very, very cool. And I know we had the opportunity to see it and hear it and listen to it uh, when you guys brought it to us in Raleigh. You can check out our full review of, of both pipe, both pieces as well. We were really, really impressed, really, really blown away. Um, I'm going to go to a couple couple questions from the audience here, and we'll just kind of fire away at as many as we can. And I know Ricky, Darren, obviously Nick, jump in. So uh, this is from Jerome. He asks, what's the difference between a Class A, B amp and a Class D amp, and is there a better application for one versus the other? So it's kind of a general question. But maybe yeah. you guys can all speak to that a little bit. Yeah, great, great question. Ricky, fire away. Well, Darren will be able to give you a much better answer, but it, it's it's a great question. We only build Class AB amplifiers currently. It's been what we've done since the beginning. We had a short stint of building some Class D in the 2000s, um, but realistically, we've always done Class AB amplifiers. And the big benefit of Class AB is you can get bigger power and bigger dynamics and cleaner power as well. Uh, Darren can can speak to some of the 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 bigger difference between class A and class class D, but class A B will typically give you larger and more dynamic power. Yeah, we we like we like it, Jonathan. It's a great question too, because the the engineers, when I take my engineer and I give them a challenge of a product, they start with a power supply. They start with that in-house Rotel manufactured transformer and how to build that and engineer that to deliver, like Ricky said, the dynamics, the performance and the headroom on a class AB amplifier. That linear amplification is Rotel's DNA. And it's kind of that, when you pick up a Rotel, you kind of get that ugh feeling, right? That solid, heavy, massive okay. weight of heat sinks and transformers. And so it's really the DNA of the business. It's what Ricky said, it is what we do and who we are. And, and it allows us to really get in and tune and, and tweak and really refine the products to make them Rotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll touch on that a little bit. You know, there, there are great class D amps there are great class AB amps. There's bad class ABs and they're bad class D, sure. and they all do have different uh, you know, applications. Just because you know class D is notoriously efficient, and so you can get a lot of power out of it. And so, you know, over the past you know 20 years, I think class D's come a long way, and it does have you know it does have a 
bad rap from those early times, but you know, there are some that are great, you know, same thing with class AB. There are some that people lazily design and aren't as good. Rotel not being one of those. The Rotel class AB amplification systems are great, but yeah, again, different amplifications have different applications. Car audio is always going to be class D, you know, things like that. So yeah, there's, there's a place for it for sure. For sure. Definitely. Cool. Uh, next question is from Peter. He asked, does the Rotel RA6000 have both digital and analog? Uh, 5.1 channel inputs and outputs. So maybe we can talk a little bit more about, um, you know, all the different outputs that you guys have. Yeah, great, great product. Uh, we built this as, as an analog engine. We added the DAC technology to allow stereo DAC two-channel signals to be fed in. Coax inputs, uh, optical inputs, PC USB inputs, and uh, high-performance APTX HD Bluetooth streaming. So it's not a receiver, I mean, it won't decode multi-channel. It really is a two-channel product that's a stereo product fit for um, two-channel applications. And I've kind of got a question on that, Darren, as well. So I was looking through earlier, and I noticed that there's two different DAC chipsets on between the DT6000 and the RA6000. So what kind of made you guys move? Because it looks like one had a Texas Instruments and one has an ESS. So you know, what are kind of the reasons that you chose between those two? And you know, is there an advantage of one over the other? Yeah, and that's a good question. We, you know, we've used a lot of different DACs. We used a lot of great Burr Brown DACs and Wolfson DACs and AKM DACs, TI DACs. The engineers are never satisfied. And I love that curiosity. They want to push the envelope. We love the TI DAC, that PCM 5242. That DAC is a fantastic DAC. Great sound, great depth, soundstage, precision. It's got a really, a really discreet uh, performance. And we love it, like the precision. When we were engineering the DT6000, we really wanted to push that envelope. And we did build full working versions and samples. And I've got a whole house full of products, literally, that were coming on the FedEx truck every two weeks with different DACs. And we tested and trialed and measured. And we kept pushing that envelope. And we knew we could do better. We really wanted to open up and make that DT6000 something special as a source device that wasn't limited to CD that could decode 32-bit audio and respectfully 384 kilohertz audio, DSD, MQA, high resolution PCM. So when we looked at that as the performance line as a true source device to feed into an RA6000, they just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And when we found that ESS stack, we took those eight channels, configured them into four redundant processing channels. We knew we had the right DAC for the right product. So we spec that by a product basis, performance, and really reaching and exceeding beyond our targets. Oh, awesome. Very cool. Uh, this question is from Ed. Uh, Ed asks, what's the difference between the RA6000 and the Michi X3X5? Does the RA6000 have a bypass feature? So maybe you guys can talk a little bit about Michi as well for those who don't know much about Michi and then maybe how some of that um, has translated into the new Rotel line. Yeah, Ricky. Yeah, so the the Michi, the entire series, if you're not familiar with it, it's absolutely amazing. I'm sitting right next to a Michi X3 right now, and it's Michi is what happens when Rotel says there's no budget. Let's build what what the best thing that we can build. Uh, no no any limitations at all, and the RA6000 is as close as you can get to Michi with some constraints. So Michi has no constraints. RA6000 is, let's put it in a package that is the size that people are used to. Let's put it in a package that is more affordable. Not that the Michi isn't affordable, and not that either one of them is inexpensive, but it's more affordable than the Michi. But the RA6000 took the power section architecture of the Michi and the front-end architecture of the Mark II series and put them together into a package that does something that neither one of those other series do. Very cool. Yeah. Anything else to add? It's um, it was great. Ricky, Ricky nailed it. It really was the power engine out of Amici because we we know that we know that reference. We know the drive, right? It's that control, deep bass energy with an incredible amount of headroom and just smooth. Then the DAC section leveraging the Mark IIs with the new TI DAC, the output filters, the capacitors, the power supply feeding those DACs. Marrying those two together allowed us to get a product that was it was a bit more affordable, packaged differently, again in a different chassis. But it is it is really the best of those two technologies. So there are sonic differences, 
there's a bit of power differences between them and certainly industrial designs are very different between the two series and especially with the industrial design the the Diamond series really harkens back to classic real tail design with the the heat sink. They're not true heat sink fins on this model, but the heat sink looking fins, the the brushed aluminum face, the the milled knobs and whatnot really harken back to classic Rotel, as well as the, even the naming conventions. Now we're back to an X triple zero series, which is very classic Rotel as well. Yeah, very cool. Uh, this is from George. He asked, you know, can you use this to buy amp? Yeah, there's, um, there are two sets of speaker outputs. So there's an A and a B speaker output. <clears throat> you can certainly use it <clears throat> as a buy wire. So you can buy wire directly off of the amp. You can also buy amp using the pre outs from the device itself. So it's built and engineered to allow an external amplifier in addition to the internal amplifier to be connected. So ultimate flexibility, either a second zone of speakers by wiring directly out of the amp into the LF and HF into the speaker or by amping with a second amplifier. Got it. Yeah, and I don't have a great photo to show the back right now, but if you go to the review that we'll post, obviously we've got lots of, lots of images of both the front and the back where you can see all the different inputs. And of course you can see the full review where we speak to um, the performance and everything else overall. Uh, let's see here. We'll keep, keep rolling with a couple more questions uh, unless you guys see one that jumps out at you that you want to address here. Well, I've seen a few questions on yeah. Rune. So you guys are currently Rune tested. So I know that these have you know a 32-bit DAC, so you can completely losslessly stream 24192 straight to both of these units. You can uh, 24192 PC USB to both units. PC USB directly to a Rune Nook, directly to any Rune uh, compatible device. So it's a uh, it is fully Rune tested, and you can run up to 32-bit audio as well. So you can actually render 32-bit 384K PCM oh, audio through the devices. So it's ultra high res. Oh, awesome. And it looks like the DT6000 also has a USB input, which is huge as well if you don't want to use Rune or some other type of server. Now, that's awesome. Uh, a couple more questions here. Someone's asked about the, uh, we're trying to find the question so I can say it correctly, but about the home theater integration and application is that something you can do for audio um it, it depends on what you want to do if you're looking for something that's going to de be doing multi-channel decoding it it won't happen on board the dt or the, the rs6000 but in a situation what i'm using i'm using my x3 to power my two front channel speakers even though the signal is being processed by my rsp1576 so if you take a look at our home theater processor it has the ability to output to all these different amps and we have the specs for every single one of our amps of what to set the fixed volume to when you're using it with a multi-channel uh, decoder. So that I have my, like I said, I have an X3 powering my fronts, and I actually have a T11 or an A11 powering my center channel, all powered by an RSP1576. So there so do, are applications, but it's it's as in addition to a multi-channel processor, unless you wanted to do just two-channel which you can do out of the optical or coax, depending on your TV model, or of the analog output of your TV into one of the analog inputs on the RS6000 as well. And Nick can yeah. also speak to that as a home theater expert. Yeah, well, you know, I work with a lot of people in home theaters that want to have a mix between both two channel and home theater. And so I'm actually about to do this on my system where I'm adding, because I've been running an integrated amp and streamer for years just because I prefer two channel. But recently, adding a sub on, there's really not a great way to integrate that without an active crossover don't want to get too in the weeds here but you know having the ability to do a fixed level input on an integrated amp allows that integrated amp to basically become a power amp for exactly. a receiver so you can use it using you know some people call it home theater bypass some people call it power amp in you know there's a bunch of different names for it but yeah for something like this it'd be perfect um and i assume you know since most of them don't neither of these products have any type of subwoofer integration in them, like active crossovers or any way to change that, correct? Correct. So the, it's full full of range out on the, on the sub out. Um, mm -hmm. And it is, it's what you say, that, that home theater bypass, we have a, a specific menu setting that allows you to enable and disable that and choose between an RCA input or an XLR input. So you can set that. And when that's active, it will set to a unity gain level, just what you said, Nick, it's a fixed, it becomes basically an amplifier. Yeah. I mean, own controls and routes it straight to the amp. Yeah, 200 watts at eight ohms is a lot of power. Yeah, you know that's really for from a home theater uh, you know, perspective. 
uh, you know, there's not much that that can't drive in the, you know, standard market that would be applicable with, for a integrated amp of this size. I mean, it's, it can drive speakers probably far beyond its price point. So, yep. yeah. yeah. Darren, Darren will remember, I think when you, when you guys first brought it to us, uh, in our Raleigh showroom, we have a conference room next to one of our high performance <laughs> audio rooms. And the sales guys in our Raleigh showroom were so excited to get their hands on this. And we had like a really, really high end audio. I think it was a Sonos Faber. I can't remember which line it was, but really high end speakers. And we're sitting there and we're like, you just, you could feel the music in the conference room as the sales guys were so excited to get their hands on this. I had to, there's not many places in the world that you can not get in trouble for playing music too loud. Audio advice, 99% of the time is that place where you can't get in trouble for playing the music too loud. But we, uh, we had to tell them to actually turn it down a little bit so we could have our meeting and learn all the great stuff about this. But I mean, you talk about a, an amp that punches way, way above its weight. I think this certainly falls in that category. Sure, sure. There was a question, Jonathan, popped up about BSD support. Sure. Uh, and it is on the on the DT6000. So on the uh, DAC transport, it will support BSD audio, uh, 1X, 2X, and 4X over the uh, PC USB connection. So that is something that um, that has a following, and it's uh, it's great to be able to support uh, that in the product as well as well as MQA on, yep. uh, on both models. And these are but these are both are only stereo out, so you can't get multi-channel out of that as right. well. Right, stereo, stereo. And yeah. do these play SA CDs? I know it's kind of not as um, popular of a format these days, but I have some people that every once in a while that'll ask about SA CDs. Yeah, every once in a while, but no. The every once in a while is true, but the answer is still no. <laughs> yep, I figured. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what about what about um, vinyl, analog? Can you speak moving to magnet that? input on the RA6000. Great. Robert asked, you know, does it have one? If so, moving magnet, moving coil. So it's moving magnet. Yeah. Would you guys consider it? I know this is you guys are Rotel, but would you consider it a like run of the mill phono preamp, or would you recommend adding on a you know a different moving magnet phono preamp if you're let's say on a Ortofon two M black, so higher end? Would you recommend going to something upgrading a little bit or using this one? You know, it it's a great it's a great phono preamp. The the curve is really precise, and we get we get great comments. Um, if if you're really going to have something that's going to be able to take advantage of an external phono preamp, by all means do it. And an MC for sure, but higher end MM cartridges, I, I think there can be a big advantage here. But anything that's casual listening through some very performance cartridges, this will be able to drive very well. And it's ultra quiet. It's uh, it's an amazing circuit. And the circuits they keep tuning, but this circuit's something because we've had we've had uh, MM inputs when vinyl wasn't cool. We've had MM inputs for 20, 30, let's call it 60 years. Like it's just always been there because it speaks hi-fi to us. And even though there wasn't a lot of sales of vinyl and turntables, that was really a big part of our DNA, and we and we kept that in the products. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think it's crucial for an integrated amp to have a uh, some type of phono input because you know I'm constantly swapping out gear. I don't always keep a phono, you know, phono stage up here. So if I'm testing out a different integrated amp, it's got to have one. Yeah, yeah. So we've had this question asked six different ways, so we'll finally get to it. So everybody wants to know one: What are you guys? What speakers are you driving with your Rotel amps? We'll start there. Um, I have a pair of Sonus Faber Olympica ones. Mm -hmm. And then these Lumina ones are powered by a Rotel A12. I have several. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I have several, and they come in. They come in and out, right? And um, I just sent a pair off for a photo shoot, and I'm I'm sitting here with two empty speaker stands just off to my shoulder, reminding me every day, waiting for them to come back. But I've I've uh, got some great Sonos Faber speakers, and I've got uh, a several set of, of power speakers, and. You know, I've had monitor speakers through here. Uh, it's amazing, right? It's just, it's such an opportunity to be able to hear and listen to the differences in the technologies in those speakers. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. But I, I don't have a, it's very, it's much of a revolving door because I love getting new kits. Yeah, you want to start to the job for sure, right? Yeah. Constantly change up. And Ricky, if you want to know about your, your, your setup there, tell us uh, a little bit real quick. To answer your question, it's not a Nord, it's a Behringer MS-1. Uh, and yeah, I've got I've got some cool stuff here. Uh, an ASM Hydrosynth, a uh, Roland JP8, uh, Dreadbox Typhon, Roland uh, TR8S. Some cool stuff. Very cool. And once Very again, powered. I'm I'm playing all of this into a Rotel A12 out to my Lumina ones, and it sounds amazing. That's awesome. Really cool. 
All right, we'll keep these questions coming. Uh, you guys, if you see another one that you want to address, feel free to do so. We'll keep keep them coming here. Yeah, there's a question about um, can we can it drive the RE6000 low impedance speakers? Uh, and this is one of my favorite questions, right? Is it eight ohm, four ohm, two ohm? Like, kind of how low can you go? This this was back to the uh, to the engineering and the class AB and the design itself and the way that they overbuild those in-house manufactured transformers and those big massive bulk storage capacitors that are feeding the amplifier circuits. Rotel is very comfortable driving low impedance. And, and really it's because of that supply in the headroom that's allowed there. Uh, Nick mentioned 200 watts in a, in a home theater is, a, is an incredible amount of power. 200 watts, eight ohms, right up to 350 into six, and it keeps driving, right? It doesn't just fall off. So it just keeps driving. And the more that it's fed, the, the happier it is as an amplifier. So it's great to see that technology and the engineering methods pay back on real low impedance speakers. And also I wanted to answer a question I've seen a couple of times. People are sure. asking about uh, the DT6000 and the RCD1572 Mark II. The DT6000 is hands down without a question the best CD player that Rotel has ever built in 30 years of building CD players. The RCD1572 Mark II is a really, really amazing CD player, but the DT6000 is just a level that we have not ever come close to before. And realistically, a level that other people can't get to at the price. So I'm going to ask you guys kind of another funky question. Uh, would you rather stream through Rune, like a uh, 24192, or play a good quality CD? Because uh, I, I still see CDs, you know, people are still play them and they have an argument for them. Do you guys have, you know, a reason why you would, you know, take a CD player and add this on whenever you still have, you know, superior streaming quality by number? It's, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a tough question because I've also got... 400 records sitting next to me too so the streaming is by the numbers better quality right but it's about the experience and having yeah. i'm a big collector as you see i've got a i got a lot of stuff so i'm personally about to start getting back into cds even though i do use rune through my x3 um now that we have the dt6000 i'm gonna start building my cd collection again yeah yeah same, same. I mean, you can't beat the physicality of it. I mean, I've got, exactly. you know, a stack of records here. I've got stacks downstairs, stacks in storage. And, you know, the physicality of having, you know, the, some type of album cover is is great. Now, digital and analog, there's plen plenty of arguments that could probably fill up for these live streams. Yeah. But, you know, CDs are still very valid. I still have plenty of CDs myself. The streaming is super great for convenience. It's really easy to do. And it obviously it's good quality. And there's so much more stuff than I have physically access to. But the ritual of putting a record on the turntable and putting the arm over and then sitting in your chair and listening to it is so much different than pulling it up on your phone and saying, let's play this song. Yeah. It's cool. And I, I admit, I do make my own mixtape version of CDs, right? So mm -hmm. I love I love to do that. And there are times when I could just have a CD and if I'm traveling or I'm on the road, I've got, I've got that as a reference. And before I would make long streaming, I'd make long streaming playlists. Then I found that actually shorter playlists are better because then it just auto finds music, new music based on what I listen to. So I've got this whole experience of listening to different music and streaming because after the playlist ends, it just goes out and start pulling random stuff. But I, I love, I love uh, shiny plastic discs. I do admit. On the, uh, on the same notes, I was just asking about uh, favorite demo songs. I know you guys under the Samiko parent branch. So I know what that, brand is <laughs> or that their favorite is uh but do you guys have a personal favorite um i've got two that i really like to do um that are not in any way traditional hi-fi demo songs but i think they're songs that i know in and out really well and can speak to when i show somebody and one of the first one is my own summer by deftones that drum intro is i know how it sounds i've been listening to that song for 25 years i know what it sounds like on cheap headphones i know what it sounds like on I used to work at a high-end headphone company. I know what it sounds like on $50,000 headphones. I know what it sounds like on big speakers and live in concerts. So I, that's a really great one. And the other side, uh, Hurt by Nine Inch Nails, is just a – it's it's a like book of how to do dynamics within a single song. And there's so much going on there. There's so much things that are mixed really, really low and off to the side. If you get a good system, you're going to hear all of it. And that's a really great demo song. Well, Trent Reznor puts like a lot of different layers in his music. And yeah. so you really want transparency whenever you're listening to a high-end system. And so you can hear all those different layers. Everything has exactly. texture. Yeah. Darren, do you have one or two? Yeah, my, my favorite demo song is Anything Except Hotel California. Show me your sign, Nick. I, all right. You're not going to believe this. I have a sign over this. All right. So if you've ever seen 
uh, Wayne's World. They're in the guitar store, they have a they have a sign that says "No Stairway to Heaven." Yep. I've yeah. got one over the top of my listening area that says "No Hotel California" uh, yeah. for that exact reason. Yeah. It's been burning not, in my brain. Not the song; it's the demo use of the song. Oh that's, yeah, no, yeah, that's the Eagles fan. I love the Eagles, right? It's great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're really uh, there's a lot, and I do a lot of listening as I'm tuning and talking to the engineers, and we're dialing in. And it's like, well, that's a great song, and that's a great song. So I can't be trusted for a favorite song because it changes often because it's great music. And when I'm walking around Audio Advice Live, I'm thrilled because my Shazam and Soundhound is lit up as I go from room that's to room right. to room and just listening and tracking and screenshotting. And people think I'm sending text messages. No, it's every song is like, oh, that's cool, and that's cool. Yeah. Or if that's not cool, I'm going to make sure I capture that. But it's great. I love this event. I'm, I'm excited to get get to Raleigh. Let's do awesome. it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so maybe, uh, Darren, Ricky, maybe we can turn over to you guys. To, for those who are able to make it or want to make it, maybe you can share a little bit more about what they can expect to see from Rotel and from some of your, your, your sister brands as well. Yeah. So we're actually showing a really, really cool, really big system featuring Rotel at Audio Advice Live. So we're going to have a Michi P5 preamp powering a pair of S5 stereo power amps. They will each be bi-amping a set of Sonus Faber Lilium speakers. So this is a extremely high dollar system and extremely well built and beautifully designed system as well. Yeah, really cool. We are so super excited. Uh, you guys are supporting the show in a huge way. I think you've got like the big presidential suite in the Sheraton Hotel on the top floor. So we are really, really fired up about it. And there's going to be a, just a ton of really cool, super high end experiences. Um, I could go on and on and on, but check out audioadvice.live to, uh, to see the full list there. Here we'll, we'll post. And then, uh, you know, there's also going to be stuff that's very, very affordable. You know, you can, you'll, you will have headphones for a couple hundred bucks and, and bookshelf speakers for a few hundred bucks all the way up to, I think we've got a pair of $350,000 Piega speakers as, along with many, many more. So again, thank you guys for your support. And, uh, we're excited to have you in Raleigh here in 35 days and counting. So. But who's keeping who's counting me because it's a lot of work. All right. We'll keep them. Keep the questions rolling here. Uh, some folks have asked, what about HDMI? Yeah, we we continue to look at where could HDMI fit and what would we do in a, in a two channel product? I don't have any answers today, but it is it is a fantastic application. So I know it's something that we're looking at and really using something to decode and render a, a 2.0 kind of system is uh, is a big part of it. So how that fits into the stereo product, stay tuned, because we're excited about uh, continuing to follow that path. Very cool. And I don't think we finished going around the horn on, um, Nick, maybe your thoughts on, on a couple of good audio demo tracks. You know, I've, I've always had two. Hotel California. Yeah, yeah, no, not that one. Um, you know, I've got two that are kind of kind of funkier. Uh, one actually has probably become more popular, um, which is Jacob Collier Hideaway. It was a really good one. Uh, I use quite a bit. I've got a whole list of them and I use for different things, uh, you know, but Jacob Collier Hideaway is one of my favorite. And then there's a Dolly Parton and Chet Adkins like duo that they do together. Um, that is, uh, do I ever cross your mind? Beautiful song. They're you know, basically sitting around one microphone, singing on both sides. So for sound staging, that's one of my favorites. And um Probably uh, Tennessee Stud by the Nitty Gritty. Uh, they've got this like opening, basically this opening track where they're all sitting around one microphone as well. And you can like on a great system, you can locate each person in the room whenever it's completely dark. And it's just one of my favorites. So I've, I've tested that on a few different systems and it's just, it's always going to be one of my favorite. Very cool. I've got one, uh, Nick heard me talk about this one. It's, it's by uh, Andre Day called Rise Up. So it's just a great female vocal track, right? She's got an incredibly powerful voice, very, very broad range. It's a great track to listen to. That's always one of my favorites. Not one that you'll typically hear at a show, but I've also got my full list of hi-fi demo tracks like you, Darren, that I take uh, Shazam around when I'm at like Expona or some of these other shows. Obviously at Audio Advice Live, we hear a lot of great ones. And we actually will have a great Cobuzz playlist that we'll, we'll share as well with everyone. Um, any burn-in needed? And if so, does this does the sound change over time? Yeah, that that's also an important one. Um, we found the technology we engineered for Michi required a much longer burn-in. Some of those new capacitors and resistors, and you'll see those red rectangular big standoff parts looking at an internal shot of a Michi, and you'll see that looking at an internal shot of a diamond. Those are about an 80-hour burn-in. Kind of before they really start to loosen up. They come out of the box a little tight, 
but you let it, let them breathe a bit, give them a little bit of time, and they really do loosen up. So all of the new Rotel products need about an 80 hour plus. And I've had reviewers and, and customers call back and say they're at 100, 200, 300 plus, and it's still is just opening more and more. So great news to know that it's going to just settle in and continue to settle with a bit more run time. Very cool. And to add on to that, I've seen this asked a couple of times as well. The the one of the goals with the Rotel amplification is to not have a sound signature, to give you what the artists recorded. So it, it's there are a lot of brands out there that have a, a warm or a cold. We try and be as neutral as possible uh, in a, as, as much as we can do, do. Yeah, you guys definitely have the reputation for that. Uh, that's that's what I've noticed. Of, uh, you know, everybody thinks about Rotel being super neutral. It's not, you know. It doesn't have some people talk about the cl classic you know, British sound or more yeah. the American sound. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's it's super neutral. I love y'all's amps. And uh, tell us a little bit. Of, I was looking under the hood just a second ago on this thing, and how large is that uh, toroidal transformer in the uh, in the RE six thousand? Because that thing looks massive from the picture. I wish we could pull it up on here, but uh, do you know how large that is? Uh, I think large. Yeah, it's large. <laughs> I think they're about six I inches across. The, the product itself, yeah. you know, you're you're talking about tipping the scales at um, sort of close to fifty pounds worth of worth of mass, and it's uh, it really is quite quite a beast. But that transformer, factory built, a lot of copper, a lot of steel, um, with a, a solid epoxy core that's poured in to make sure that that it doesn't vibrate and eliminate the the vibrations and then put into that metal can to keep the radiation in the can so it doesn't spread out to the other parts of the sensitive circuits but it's uh it's a massive right you start talking about 12 plus pounds kind of like weight in a product mm -hmm. and it starts to make a big difference but well it's you know having a 50 pound rating on there and saying it's 200 watts you know you see some you know some out there that say for 200 watts and it weighs 15 pounds, which is physically impossible. And so, you know, for something like this, yeah, I, I totally believe that. Yeah. And it looks like you guys have the preamp section separated from the amplifier section entirely. So it's almost like two and one type situation going on here. Yeah, that's that's a thing that, that and, and Darren can speak a, a little bit more to this in detail, but when you look at the Michi series, for example, the P5 and the S5 were the first two entrants. And when they, when we got ready to do the integrated the goal was to make separates in a box. So mm -hmm. it really is two completely different sections in the same box. Mm -hmm. It's cool. It's cool. We, we design a power supply and we give that to the transformer engineer. We take an amplifier design, we give that to the amplifier engineer. We give the digital front end, we give that to the digital engineers, right? And then the analog section goes to a different team and they work independently, but but together. It's just, as Ricky said, and you see that in the PCB, the way that they're physically isolated and separated is for noise. It's because they're engineered by different teams and then integrated into the same box. So it, it is that kind of no compromise put the technologies into the same box, but don't make an integrated amplifier uh, to start. It's separate in the same physical chassis. Yeah, because the, the signal path is arguably one of the most important parts. You know, you can have some of the best DACs in the world, but if it doesn't have good power going to it, it doesn't have a clean signal path, it's just not going to sound good. Yeah. And yeah, yeah I, I'd also like to speak to, to I, saw, I saw a comment about someone asked if it was made in China. Our, our products are built in China in a factory that is owned by Rotel, only used by Rotel. The people that work at the factory were trained by the people who had, were at the original factory in Japan. It is in China, but it is a completely from start to finish made by Rotel. We don't do anything off the shelf. It's all us, those transformers that we've been talking about. You can find a cool video on our YouTube channel of that process being done. And we build, th that is really the heart of the Rotel. And, and we build those completely in-house as well as basically every other component in the machine. Awesome. Uh, someone asked, what's the difference between the Diamond Series and the Rotel N2? Yeah, uh, the Mark IIs? Yeah. yeah, the Mark IIs, Ricky. Uh, so the difference between the Diamond and the Mark IIs is the Diamond takes a little bit more of a no compromises approach, similar to the Michi. So the, the Mark II stuff is still what we would consider something that, that anybody can get right it, it's 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 a really really great amp but they're not so far out of reach the michi stuff can sometimes feel a little bit out of reach and the diamond kind of bridges that gap 
Very cool, cool. Uh, we'll keep them rolling here. Um, someone asked, when was Rotel founded or started? Maybe you can speak to a little bit more of the history. I know you covered some of that, Darren, at the, the intro here. Yeah, it, it, it's, um, it's an incredible journey. Um, really, 1961, Tokyo, Japan, and the founder, he started an OEM factory. He was building electronics for a lot of the brands that are still around today. So he was building electronics. He had the factory, had the teams, the equipment. He realized that he wanted to do something beyond that. Now, if I'm sitting here and I'm in 1961, starting an audio brand, kind of ever, right? It takes a, it takes a little bit of craziness, I think, because that's a big business. It's a huge responsibility for him to take on a, an audio brand. But he had such confidence in his processes and in his people that he started that brand, launched it, and as the factory grew and evolved, again, from the family just moving from the from the grandfather to the son and now to the nephew, uh, it's an incredible journey for, for Rotel. And um, 60 years, we're, um, we're thrilled. It's just a really respected. I have uh, an amazing opportunity to work for such a great family who really is passionate. They care about the products. They care about the, the family of our Rotel customers over those years and the stories that come in. And I see it in the comments. I like think my dad had, my uncle had, uh, my roommate had. Everyone's got a story about Rotel. Somebody that owned Rotel. They know someone that owned Rotel. They owned Rotel, right? Back in college or in early days, they still own Rotel. But that brand, not just is the heritage, but just the legacy of the products and the series of the products has been has been there for a good long while. And it's nice to see those touch points of people that have experienced the brand in one one level or another. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, great history that you don't always find necessarily uh, yeah. in, in some of the some of the brands or competitors that are in your category. And, and Ricky, I know you spoke to this a little bit about the, the fact that you guys own your own uh, manufacturing facility and so forth. And some folks have asked, you know, have you guys been impacted by all of the supply chain challenges and, you know, product availability and so forth? I don't know if you guys can speak to that a little bit more. I mean, Darren, Darren's got a better, a better insight on that, on the manufacturing side than me, but I'll, I'll let him go. Uh, the answer is yes. So that's great. <laughs> uh, let's just say it's not just supply chain, right? It's been, uh, it's been incredibly difficult. Um, here's, here's what's different, Jonathan. This is, this is what happens when you've got a 60 year old brand. When there are issues and there are concerns and there are there are um, worries, Rotel as a business has never backed off. Rotel as a business steps up, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what's happened. When there was supply chain and we started to see that there were issues in getting parts, or even uh, we used a lot of AKM parts. When the AKM factory in Japan burned down a couple of years ago, uh, it, it caused a massive hiccup. And Rotel jumped in and started to do two things. We were sourcing parts that we knew that we needed to use, as well as looking at how could we engineer our products to be able to continue to support with maybe alternate parts. So during the pandemic, we have purchased more parts. We've built up our inventory. We've had great supply of product globally. And that's just the, the commitment of the family is not pulling back on marketing or purchasing our materials, but investing because they know just like in those past 60 years, we're going to come out of the other side stronger than when we went in. And we need to support our partners. We need to support our customers. We need to support the dealers, the distribution. That's that's what's exciting about this. So, yes, it's been a huge challenge in shipping and delays and, and transport and vessels, uh, containers. Yeah, yeah, it really is the perfect storm of trouble, but the brand has done extremely well. And it's because of our relationships all the way through the channels. Yeah, absolutely good. And I, I've got a, I, I, I keep seeing it pop up. Frank wants to know why there's a better DAC in the DT6 cells and then the RA6 cells. And um, realistically, if we put the same DAC that's in the DT6 cells into the RA6 cells, it would cost too much. We couldn't do it for what we need to be able to charge and what we would want you to be able to pay for the RA6 cells. And secondly, they're designed as a pair. Obviously, either one will work with other equipment, but they're designed to be a family of, of products. And so there, there's a number of things going in there. And as Darren spoke about in the beginning, the in, original intent was not to put such a high-end DAC in the CD player. It just wound up being that our engineers loved tinkering, tinkering with things and just kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it. And it got to a point where we decided this is too good to not release in this form. And, and that's kind of where we wound up. Yeah, and, and kind of the philosophy of having 
each item have its own specific use case. So like as you get higher and higher into the, you know, the audio file world, everything starts to become more specialized. Exactly. And so whenever you have, you know, a DAC of you know, that caliber in its own box, it has its own power supply and it's only doing that one job. And so we were kind of talking about earlier with the interference that can happen. Mm-hmm. You don't really have to worry about that as much because it's isolated. And, and it is a fully balanced design as well from the DAC. The, the DAC is an eight-channel DAC only running two channels of audio. So each, the left and the right, each have four channels of DAC. It's completely balanced all the way out to the XLRs, which you can put into the XLR input on the RA6000 straight to your power amp. So completely balanced all the way through. Mm-hmm. Very, very cool. Uh, what's, uh, I can't find the exact question, but several first asked sort of what's on the horizon for Rotel that you can share? Oh, I love that. Um, it's been an incredible past couple of years for us. The, the cadence of products that have been released has been amazing, and uh, if not exhausting. And to do that during a pandemic has also been a, a huge challenge we talked about with, with trying to get parts and being able to, a lot of times just meeting with suppliers or the technical teams of some of the, um, the chipsets. But uh, Rotel as an engineering and as a factory and as a brand has really stepped up, and there's a lot of stuff coming. So um we've got uh, we're not done with mark twos so we're still moving through that we know we can engineer and update uh additional products with that new technology that we've developed uh that's also a, a big part of it uh, michi is actually a japanese word that means road or path so michi is not the end michi is the beginning for us so we are continuing to engineer and develop new Michi products to support that series of products. And that's quite an exciting thing. And what that means is we develop and we can near on Michi. We can bring some of that technology down into the Rotel products as well. Uh, the big question is, uh, does Rotel have anything with Wi-Fi antennas? So uh, I can't really say anything today, but I can promise you that this has been a solution that we have been investigating, studying to find a wireless solution that we are confident would be respectful and, uh, and uh, deserving of Rotel. So those are also things that we've been looking at and, um, and we're chasing hard. So uh, it's going to be, it's going to be an exciting end of this year and next year we're going to kick it off uh, also with a, with a big bang. So lots of, lots of stuff coming. Very cool. Folks will have to definitely stay tuned for more. Um, I'm, I know we'll be, very, very excited to share uh, what's to come with the brain, for sure. Uh, let's see if I got time for one or two more. If you guys have anything we want to uh, touch on real quick. Uh, Ricky, Ricky talked a little bit about the, about the factory. Um, and, I, and I worked in and around the factory for a, a long time. So I was in and around the factory uh, just up to on in, including uh, when COVID kicked in. But Rotel's factory is quite special. And it really is a factory. As you talked about, our factory is located in mainland China, and we're very proud. Our staff, our quality teams, our finance purchasing engineering teams all co-located in a single space, which is massively efficient. Right? I can't imagine having to travel to bring people from here to there and engineers scattered. So we've got great resources globally, and then the work I engineered at the factory. But those Japanese manufacturing standards are Rotel. They were Rotel in 1961. They are Rotel in 2022. And even walking around the factory, there are still manufacturing and assembly and quality documents written in Japanese hanging on the production lines. And that's just the standard. That's what they use. And when I ask why don't they translate those documents into local language, it's like that's the standard. That's what we follow. This is our culture. This is the environment. And it's, it's amazing. It's so cool to see that and just see the pride that they take in delivering that level of quality of product and to follow those standards. Uh, and it's amazing, amazing to see that. It wouldn't matter where that factory is in the world. It's the standards that drive Rotel as a brand. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thanks for sharing that. You can just see the passion for the brand and the history, how it just you know comes across in, you know, in, in your voice and in everything that you guys do, which has been really awesome. And just the fact that the brand is really sort of uh, stood the test of time, right? There's no, I know that sounds cliche, but there's really no better way to put it. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for the, the amazing partnership. We're going to call it a wrap here because we've got a lot of cool things to, to give away. So thank you guys, uh, Ricky, Darren, Nick, as always. It's been a lot of fun. I think we, we covered a lot of questions. We'll go back and answer as many of these questions as we can. So when we post the video, we'll, we'll keep those comments and answers coming. Sorry. 
Uh, so keep the questions coming. We'll answer as many of those as we possibly can. So, Nick, I think that they said you get to pick the winner for best question uh, for the Rotel tribute. So tell us what well, you we have. Were, we were kind of going uh, behind the scenes, me and the rest of the team. So if you guys see me looking out uh, to my left, there's not a window here. It's another monitor. Um, so the uh, the best question determined by the team, not just myself. So uh, it's what is the difference between a class A B amp and a class D or the different applications for the others? And that was by Jerome Gant. So big congrats, Jerome, not a bad new amp. And you get an awesome, awesome prize. It's a great integrated. An awesome class A B amp. Now we'll see if Jerome can come back and tell us the difference in <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Very, very cool. All right, we got a couple of other quick announcements really quick. Um, we are doing another live stream with it with one of our partners. You guys all know Clips. We're doing a really cool uh, focusing on the Heritage series. So that's actually going to be next Tuesday at 5 p.m. We'll be having our friends from Clips talking about some new and exciting things that they have uh, with the Clips Heritage series. If you come to Audio Advice Live, you'll also be able to see the Clips Jubilees, uh, which are literally like six feet tall, super wide. They're going to be the PA system uh, in our big ballroom when we have our keynote and breakout sessions. So you'll be able to hear those as well. And then go ahead. We'll, we'll put the like giveaway up for next month. Be sure to come back uh, August the 11th. We're going to be giving away a Cambridge Alva turntable, the new version. Super exciting, over $2,000 value. So be sure to uh, go ahead and enter. That giveaway is already up and uh, available to register now. So thanks again for joining. And then I will announce, people ask me why I keep looking to my left. I've also got a couple different screens up, as you can imagine. Uh, trying to keep up with all the comments and uh, the info from the team. So the winner of our Rotel giveaway, again, thank you guys for being so incredibly generous. It's been great to learn more about this particular new product series. And again, so much more to come. So we'll do a little virtual drum roll here. Our giveaway winner is Robert Thornton from Alabama. So Robert, congratulations. You are the big winner. I know you will be super excited. We will reach out to you and connect with you and make sure that we get that shipped over to you here real soon so again rick ricky darren thanks for joining us it's been a whole lot of fun hopefully you guys had a lot of fun definitely, as well. definitely. Cool. thanks for the uh, support jonathan great great conversation great opportunity and a real pleasure nick thank you we appreciate thank the support audio advice we'll see you in a couple of weeks that's right we'll see you at audio advice live we yeah. can't wait 35 days and counting and again thanks for your support uh, it's been a whole lot of fun be sure to check out the website follow us on instagram follow us on youtube we'll have a whole lot more information coming about what you can expect to see at Audio Vice Live. Join us next Tuesday. And again, the giveaway is up for, uh, for August 11th. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's been a whole lot of fun. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.